Good morning! Welcome to a video by mountainwomencoaching.com. My name is Josephine and today I wanted to talk to you about 17 money blocks that you might have. And why do I want to talk about money blocks? It's because I could tell you and I would love to tell you how you can improve your finances and how you can start investing and how you can make more money. But as long as you don't work on your blocks and you don't acknowledge them or you don't have any or you don't realize that you have these blocks, then it's very easy to get stuck somewhere and this might be often the case is that when a new opportunity shows itself at your door you might actually be scared of that or you might actually push it away because you have a block somewhere and in this video I will point out 17 blocks that people might have or that you might have and that I definitely have and why they block you from making your life more amazing or that it blocks you from getting more money come into your life. So without further ado, let's go into the intro and let's get started. Block number one is not going to the doctor. So are you one of those people like I was that just cannot see the point of going or paying money to go to the doctor? Because first of all, I'm really, really scared of doctors. Usually doctors, they never give me, they never give me good news. Whenever I know that I have to go to the doctor, I'm like, why am I paying money for someone to just tell me some really, really, really bad or bad things that are, or things that are wrong with me. And I've actually refused to go to the doctor for a long time because of my shoulder. And this last December, so I could not postpone it anymore. I went to the doctor, I just had an accident, it dislocated for a third time and I finally went to the doctor and got it fixed. How does that stop you from or how why is this a money block? Because if you just never go to the doctor and you just keep on postponing and you don't take care of your own health, it might actually in the future give you bigger problems or you might just be working and not taking time off or you might not be paying for medication that might get you or make you feel better and you're going to work just at 50 60 percent and then you end up getting sick because you're just pushing yourself too hard so please spend that money and go to the doctor and see what's up with your body because you only have one body if it's broken or if it's sick you don't have a second one Second money block is spending splurges. So we've all done it. I've definitely done it. I love clothes and I love shoes. And if there's a sale on, it's sometimes really hard to just walk away. And once you've gotten in and you've started shopping, oh, it just doesn't end, does it? And I'm not saying that you should never go to a sale anymore or that you should just never buy anything on sale, but if it's actually things that you do not need and at this moment you could use that money for other things like investing in your business or paying it paying for a beautiful holiday together or together with your family then that does become a block because you're actually spending on 
spending on things that do not give you that much satisfaction and that are not your highest priority at the moment. So that is definitely a block that I had to work on, that a lot of people have to work on, is to let go of that idea that you have to go and spend money every time there is a sale. We are at number three. Number three is going out to dinner when you don't feel like it. So is it often that you commit to a dinner and then in the last minute or a couple of days beforehand you're already feeling like you don't really want to go and you're kind of wanna you kind of want to go but you don't really want to you know what i mean it's like you you feel like you wanted to in the moment but then afterwards you come to regret it and then you go to dinner you're all dressed up you don't really want to go you're spending this money on something that you actually are in your heart and soul you feel like you don't really want to do and that's a block as well because you feel obligated probably by other people to go to disappointments and to spend money on something that you feel is not that that um, satisfying for you and that's a block too because you're actually spending money on things that you do not like and not to say that you shouldn't go out to dinner but do it only when you really want to do it a fourth block that you might have is do you eat all the food on your plate and you might be wondering what does this has have to do with money well it does become a block because when you eat all the food on your plate, you're actually saying to yourself, and when you, especially when you eat it when you are not hungry anymore and you're just trying to eat it and eat it and eat it because you have this belief that you should not be wasteful. And how does being wasteful come out in different parts of your life? For example, you might hold on to things that you don't use anymore or hold on hold on to old papers or old shoes clothing whatever you you have in your life and if you hold on and keep on holding on to these things your life becomes a huge mess you just have all these things in your home and you feel like at a moment where you should maybe be downsizing you can't do it because you have all this stuff in your home that you're not using for anything and it's just taking up a lot of your physical space but also a lot of your mental space and instead of just letting this go and and maybe throwing it in the garbage or maybe just giving it away to other people who could use it for better for who can use it they you just don't do it because you eat all the food on your plate which means you should never throw away anything i'm gonna keep on talking about foods the fifth block that you might be having is to choose unhealthy foods instead of healthy foods why would you do that because unhealthy food might seem cheaper for you at the moment eating just rice with soy sauce seems like a very very cheap option and if you have to go through a period in your life where you need to do it to survive then you can do it but do not do this for long periods of time because if you get sick and you have to go to the hospital which which is possible you know, if you eat unhealthy food for long periods of time, you might get sick. So all the money you've saved while only buying the cheapest products ever, it's not going to pay off on the long term. So pay a little bit of extra and it doesn't mean that healthy food is that expensive. It's not expensive at all, to be honest, but it does require you to pay a little bit of extra to get fresh fruits and to get fresh fresh veggies and a little bit of extra time to cook it and it's going to pay off in the long term just wanted to show you the view from the window at the moment ah, 
isn't that pretty? It's raining. Another block you might have is to buy clothes or buy items that you don't wear or don't use. And I am 100% guilty of this. I travel a lot, but every time I go to a store, I see things and I want it. And I never have space in my, in my bag for new things. If I buy something, then something has to go. That's how it works with me. And when I was not traveling, I used to be extremely guilty of this. I would go and go to sales and buy clothes because they were 50% off and I would hardly or a few of those clothes I would never wear them and it's such a waste not only for the planet but just also for your finances to spend money on things that you don't use because in the end they just get thrown away or they don't get used and it's just kind of wasteful to to just spend your money that carelessly and i'm not saying you should never buy something that's you only have to buy things that are functional or you only have to buy things that make sense or that you know that you're 100 percent going to use i still do it like i still buy items that in the end i have to give them away because i don't use them but try to be a little bit more conscious conscious of what you spend your money on and if you're actually going to use it. Another block, number seven, is rating your savings account for an emergency that is not really an emergency. If you go out and you go out shopping, for example, and there's a pair of shoes that are on sale, that is not an emergency unless you do not own a single pair of shoes then that is not an emergency <laughs> and i've been guilty of this too like i've raided my emergency savings or my savings account for all sorts of crazy stuff that i consider to be an emergency like going out for dinner with my friends like buying a plane ticket, going on a holiday. And going on a holiday is really important if you feel like that's what you really need. But we often use an emergency way too fast as an excuse to spend money. So you can stop that now. You can just keep your emergency fund for an emergency, which means that if you suddenly don't have a job anymore or something happens in your business, then you use it because that's what an emergency fund is for. Number eight is putting off renovations. Are you living in a house and you're, you've been meaning or it needs renovations? and you're just postponing it and you're not doing it just because you don't want to spend the money or you feel like it's going to cost too much. And I mention this because my mom is actually in this situation. Her house needs renovations and she just puts it off saying that it's just too costly. And the more you put it off, the more things that actually break down in the house and if you feel that it's too much for you because for example my mom she lives alone in a four bedroom house which is the house that me and my sister grew up in then you you can the option that you have is to downsize either you renovate it and you accept that it's going to cost a little bit of money or you downsize and you can just sell the house and my my mom for example could easily move to like a one bedroom place which would be easier to maintain and it's the same for you don't live in a home and postpone renovations and then live in a home that actually pisses you off or drives you mad because so many things are broken just get it fixed, just do the investments and give yourself some, some, some credit or some, some um, I don't know what to say, like 
some <laughs> give yourself some love by actually providing for yourself a home that is comfortable number nine picking fights with your partner about money and this one is particularly close to my heart if you've seen my last video i came from a household where money was always a source of a lot of arguments and if you are someone who does every time a big bill comes up or you have to pay for something that there's something inside of you that gets triggered that makes you pick fights with your partner then it is a block it's a huge block and you should dig deep into your heart or into your minds or into your memories and see where that block comes from because money is a huge source of arguments within couples and if you don't are not aware of those blocks or you are not aware that that is affecting your relationship it might cause damage to your relationship so do me a favor and make sure that you look at what's causing this frustration and work it out it's another view shot ah, I can never get enough of this view number 10 is working the whole bloody time and i am definitely guilty of this although i do it in periods and this hallway is very echoey <laughs> i don't know if i should film film in here but i'm gonna do it anyways so i work really hard but not all the time. I work hard in moments. And in my previous video, I already told, told you that I only work about eight months out of the year. And for that reason, I get time to wind down. And maybe you don't believe you work that hard. And perhaps that's part of the problem is I find a lot of women, they, because we are often the nurturers and the people who take care of other people, that's kind of what we are supposed to do. We have a tendency to not put ourselves first and that can come out in many different ways. And one of those ways is that when you're working too hard you're just working all the time and you're taking on projects too many projects and you get overwhelmed and then you come home and then you have to do all this housekeeping or take care of the family or take care of the kids and it just doesn't seem to end and where it's gonna end is having a burnout or breaking down or getting sick because there is no time nor time for yourself and that become that is also a huge money block because if you're stressed out all the time you do not make good financial decisions and if you just wind down and say no and take care of yourself first put yourself priority or make yourself a priority even when you have kids or even if you have a full-time job then it will pay off number 11 is believing or ooh, spending money on your kids while you're walking around with clothes that have holes in them this is something that when I was younger happened to my sister. My sister was at that time just so overwhelmed by life, which I definitely have had moments like that too, is she was with a young child and she was trying to get her university degree and she didn't have a lot of money and she loved her daughter so much that she tried to give her as much as she could but at the same time she denied herself um, denied to buy herself clothes and 
I mean, she had clothes, but a lot of them were kind of like run down and rags, and it just didn't didn't really help her situation at all. And I know that as a mom, you want to give your kids as much as you can, as as much as possible, but don't put it at cost of yourself at least and i don't mean that you should like starve your kids to go and buy a gucci bag or something like that but it's like give yourself take care of yourself as well and don't only give everything to your kids number 12 is never going on a holiday by yourself so this is also about family and if you have um, a partner and if you have kids and you only take vacations together with your family or with your kids or with your partner and never take time for yourself to do something, to only do something that you want to do because that's what a holiday by yourself is, is you get to choose exactly what you want to do. Then it's also a huge block because in often you don't get a lot of time to relax when you're with your family and as much as you want to spend quality time with your family make sure you're spending quality time with yourself as well and that you spend money on yourself because otherwise what often happens is you become resentful or you feel resentful if that's what you really want and if that's what you really need is to just spend some time by yourself then spend that money on yourself it's a good investment Number 13 is not asking for proper compensation for your goods or services. So what happened a couple of, um, actually about a year ago, is that I had a friend and she was, she's a good sewer. And she, sew, she had sewn a couple of things for her friends and her friends, the agreement was that they would pay for what she had made but in the end what happened is when they tried to offer her money she completely refused it and of course like if you you can do things for a favor with your friends definitely i i should i wouldn't say like you have to ask money from your friends all the time but take it take the money there is nothing wrong or nothing cheap or nothing arrogant about asking for money or asking to get compensated for your skills, your work, for the time, even if that means that you were having so much fun making these things or items or that you work with someone and it's, give, it's giving you so much fun. There is no reason why you should not get compensated for your work and your skills in your expertise so ask for that ask for money ask for getting paid and be feel maybe not be but feel okay with doing that and do it more often so you start feeling okay doing that by the way did you know that I wrote a book you can find it on Amazon and it's a book about personal development about it has plenty of stories in it about how I ended up cave diving how I ended up working for the Winter Olympics in 2018 in Pyeongchang it has a lot a lot of really difficult but very rewarding life questions for you to answer in it and it comes with a free workbook which you can download from my website I'll post a link down below and I will post a link to where you can find my book on Amazon so make sure you get your copy now that's all I have to say about that number 14 is believing you are not good enough to get paid and maybe that sounds like outrageous to you, but it comes out in very, very sneaky ways. It's like doing overwork and believing that you shouldn't get compensated for your overwork and you shouldn't get royally compensated for your overwork. The other thing is like the um, number 13 is so you make something and somebody offers you 
to pay for it and you just don't accept it. Like the whole idea of getting paid for something just makes you feel disgusted. Or the other thing is with women and our way of thinking is we are sort of considered the caretakers of all the families. Like if you look to our past, um, the past generations, like our parents and our grandparents, the women were often doing the household chores. They were taking care of sick family members. They were taking care of the kids and they were never compensated for or hardly compensated for work. Like often even when a family or two parents were getting divorced, it wasn't that long ago s since if you would get a divorce that the woman would often uh, end up with nothing. And I still hear stories or I still heard a story of a friend of mine who told me that her mom had started a business with um, her, her partners and she wants a divorce from this partner but she's not doing it because if she leaves then the business will stay with her partner and she will receive nothing and we often don't feel with this kind of history that we've had is we feel like we shouldn't stand up for ourselves and we shouldn't demand that we get proper pay because we have this inferiority feeling all the time that we are just women and that it's normal for us to just do with less so that is something that I want to see changed as well, is that we stand up and that we demand that we get proper comp compensation for what the services or the work that we do. Number 15, but it's actually um, together with number 14, is not putting your foot down when negotiating payments. So. It's been, there's been lots of research saying that whenever women have to negotiate their wages, they always, or generally, I would say on average, end up with less pay than men do. And it is probably because we are not, or we don't value ourself, ourselves enough, or we just don't have that much support when we're negotiating our wages. It's often like that women get punished when they negotiate higher salaries or they negotiate or they raise their prices just because we're supposed to, we're still dragging this stereotype with us is that we are caretakers and that all of the work that our grandmothers and our mothers have done, taking care of the kids, doing the household chores, doing all the um, all the jobs that or all the work that is that doesn't have wages and we still carry this with us this and so we do not negotiate as as um, as strongly as men do which i hope is going to change in the future as well so if you ever have to negotiate for a salary please negotiate strongly and don't feel shame feel feel inspired to do so because we have to change this wage gap it has to like or this wage gap that we have between men and women it just has to we have to balance it out number 16 not putting your savings to work so i'm a big advocate of investing and investing your savings or at least a part of your savings and unfortunately, a lot of women still struggle with the idea of investing. They're okay with investing in education and investing in real estate sometimes. But when it comes to investing in the market, they're still quite uh, resistant or, or um, un they feel uncomfortable with that idea because it's like, it's kind of like a, a man's thing or a, a man's uh, territory to go to the market and invest there. But there are a lot of opportunities to, um, to be found when you actually buy shares or you buy ETFs or stocks. 
And there's a lot of money that you can make by investing into the market. So that's the block two, because we are actually putting our money into savings accounts, which do not yield that much profit anymore. There's hardly any interest on, on savings accounts in Europe nowadays. So work on that block, understand why you are or at least find out why you have this resistance in opening up a broker account and get that account open, seriously. It's gonna improve your life. There's actually a link down below to an online broker that I work with and uh, you can get started there. It's... And last but not least, number 17, the last money block that people or that you might be struggling with is not asking for help. So I would like to say that I have gone through this journey all by myself and I was super smart and I was making decisions um, without doubting and I was never afraid, but that is not true. I have actually worked with a coach, a money coach before and what they do is it really helps you work through your, they really help you to work through your fears and that has led me to where I am at the moment. Like I do have savings now and I do feel strong and I have started my own business and I am becoming my own, um, I am becoming a money coach as well because I know the, the importance of having help and having someone guide you through that process because it's really difficult to grow without having help from someone who has done it before or someone who knows what you're struggling with and who just can say to you that whatever it is that you're afraid of it, it's just going to be okay and to help you figure out what you want and how you can get it that was the video of today. That was 17 money blocks that you might be struggling with. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Thursday about money mindsets. And if you want to work with me, there is a link down the bottom to my Fiverr gig. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me there. And there is also a link to my blog and to my social media. So make sure to check me out there for more content. Okay, see you next Thursday, darlings. I'm going to do a kiss hand again. Mwah. Bye.